NBC. Nuclear, biological, and chemical. The three weapons of mass destruction. Bar the first, the latter two have been used extensively throughout history in warfare. And of these, the biological weapons, which have not been used to their full potential, are considered the most abhorrent. Biological weapons are those defined as being living organisms, either bacterial, viral, or protozoic, that infect either an environment or host organism, such as animals or humans. Usually, the toxins of living organisms are considered non-biological and fall within the purview of the third category of chemical weapons. There are four kinds of bioweapon, bacteria, viruses, rickettsii, and fungi. Their main purpose is to reproduce in the host victim and incapacitate and be highly contagious or easily transmitted. Bioweapons can be both tactical and strategic. When weaponized, they can be dispersed in the battlefield by artillery or rocket, or dispensed into water supplies or aerosol sprayed to contaminate large areas of Earth to deny enemy occupation. Bioweapons are generally taken from nature, although there have been attempts to manufacture them. They are designed to infect soldiers or civilians or livestock and crops to destroy large populations. Most of these agents are slow-acting, requiring time to multiply in an infected host before causing an effect. Others may not be stable enough to exist outside a host long enough to infect others. Some agents are moderately fast-working but may not be lethal. The kinds of disease or bacterium that have either been used, studied or weaponized include, but are not limited to, anthrax, salmonella enterica, Q fever, Rift Valley fever, psittacosis, bubonic plague, typhus type 3, cholera, melioidosis, Lassa virus, Yersinia pestis, plague, yellow fever, Ebola. Others include Marburg virus, Tularemia, brucellosis, glanders, Shigella, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Japanese bee encephalitis, and smallpox. Some naturally occurring toxins can also be used as weapons, including the easily manufactured ricin. Staphylococcal enterotoxin B, often the cause of food poisoning, botulism toxin, saxitoxin, and many other mycotoxins. For centuries, mankind has been using the human body itself as a weapon. Biological weapons are invisible, but deadly. The first known use is recorded in Hittite texts written more than 3,000 years ago, when victims of the plague were driven into enemy lands to spread their deadly germs. Ancient warriors were known to tip their arrows and spears with poison, animal feces and snake venom to infect their enemies' wounds. Hannibal of Carthage filled clay pots with poisonous snakes and launched them onto his opponent's ships, while the city of Hatra attacked the Roman army with pots containing scorpions. When the bubonic plague ravaged Europe during the Middle Ages, soldiers catapulted infected body parts and excrement over battlements during sieges. In later years, infected clothing was used for the same purpose. When Europeans established colonies around the world, they also unwittingly brought an avalanche of diseases which ravaged native peoples who had no immunity. Although this was unintentional, there is one recorded case of a plan for deliberate infection during the French and Indian War in 1763. A letter between two British officers details the possibility of handing out blankets infected with smallpox to Native Americans. There is no evidence that the plan was carried out, but if it had been, it was likely to have been effective. Native Americans were highly susceptible to European diseases as they had not lived closely with domesticated animals. In the 20th century, the lethal disease anthrax was used very early on. Spread by spores rather than infected people, it was hidden in Russian stables by Scandinavian freedom fighters in 1916. Anthrax and the animal disease glanders were used against allied livestock in the First World War. 
Despite the Geneva Convention of 1925 that prohibited the use of biological and chemical weapons, Germany and Japan carried out biological warfare experiments on prisoners during World War II and used biological weapons in China. In the 1940s, Japan bombed China with ceramic pots carrying fleas infected with bubonic plague, which resulted in outbreaks of the deadly disease. The Allied countries also launched research into biological weapons, working out ways to convert tularemia, anthrax, brucellosis and botulism toxin into weapons. British tests on Scotland's Grinnell Island left the area contaminated with anthrax for almost 50 years. The fear and paranoia that characterized the years of the Cold War saw many allegations of biological agents. During the Korean War, China and North Korea accused the United States of testing biological weapons and releasing disease-carrying insects against their forces. Declassified documents have revealed that the United States carried out widespread testing on human subjects at Fort Detrick during the 1950s, earning the army camp the nickname Fort Doom. In a project known as Operation White Coat, authorities first used army volunteers. When the men demanded to know what substances they were being exposed to, the government recruited Seventh-day Adventists who, as conscientious objectors, refused to be part of the military draft. In 1969, President Richard Nixon announced that the United States would no longer conduct research into offensive biological weapons, instead concentrating on preventing possible infections from biological warfare. In 2008, Bruce Ivins, a senior biodefense researcher at Fort Detrick, committed suicide after being informed the FBI would charge him with contributing to a series of anthrax attacks in 2001. Five people died, and many more were infected when they opened letters carrying anthrax. The letters were mailed to senators and media organizations. After many years of investigation in which Ivans himself was involved as an anthrax expert, the FBI narrowed the search, suspecting that Ivans' motive in sending out the anthrax was to test a vaccine he was developing. Although the FBI closed the case following Ivans' death, others are not convinced that he committed the crime, or if he did, that he acted alone.